Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's. Our first hymn is hymn 199. devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me in the long right pathway for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
The second reading for today is 1 Peter 2, 19 to 25. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we may live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guiding of your soul. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Glory to you Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and abandoned. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all, out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life, and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved. I want to talk about three words that appear in our gospel lesson this morning. The words are gate, thief, and voice. Jesus uses the metaphor of the good shepherd to explain his relationship to God and how God, through Jesus, is caring for us, for the sheep. The Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, watches over us, the sheep, cares for us, protects us, and keeps us from being hurt by thieves and bandits. Jesus is the gate by which the sheep enter the pasture or enter safety. 
Jesus is the way to knowing God and ultimately to eternal life. The gate is something which all of us individually must find for ourselves. When I was between college and going to seminary, I spent two years doing various jobs, working on political campaigns, working in a bookstore, doing a lot of reading and thinking and preparing myself for a religious vocation. At that time in the early 70s, there were a lot of people my age who were exploring other religions besides Christianity to find out if they offered a path through the gate to knowledge of God. And I looked at some of these other religions in my search to find my own path, to find my way through the gate. And eventually, after making this search and praying quite a bit, I finally came to realize that Christianity was my path and was my path through the gate. For me, it was prayer that enabled me to see that this was the direction I should take if I wished not only to know God, but to be God's servant. And so it was after that search that I made the decision to go to seminary and commit myself to service to God and to helping others join with me to find the path through the gate. The second word I want to talk about is thief. Jesus talks about how thieves break into the pasture and how they steal the sheep or hurt the sheep or lead them astray. Thieves come and they hurt the sheep. There are so many thieves in this day and time that we live in. Truly, the internet is such a blessing. Here we are this morning able to worship together through the gift of the internet. But it is also a tool by which thieves seek to steal our money, our medical information, our identities, our elections. The internet is a tool whereby people lie about what is really true and seek to influence others and send them down a path which leads to self-destruction and evil. There are so many thieves all around us. And today, as we struggle with this pandemic that we are in the midst of, the two great thieves that trouble us are sickness and death. They seek to find their way into our pastures, into our places of safety, and to hurt us, to make us sick, and to perhaps even take our lives away. Jesus talks about how thieves cannot ultimately hurt those who have faith in God, who have found their way through the gate into the safety of the pasture, if they know that Jesus is guiding them and caring for them. We can arm ourselves against thieves through our faith, through listening to the Word of God, and to knowing that God is always with us. We are saved even ultimately from death through faith in Jesus Christ, through entering the gate that Jesus opens for us through faith. Finally, let me talk about the word voice. Jesus makes the point that when the thief tries to lead the lambs astray, they do not hear the thief's voice because they know that the true voice of the shepherd is the voice that they should follow. They know that God, God's voice is the voice that they should listen to. And they listen for that voice to help find their way through the gate to eternal life. We find our way through the gate and we hear Jesus' voice through prayer, through worship, and through the reading of the scriptures. When we do these three things, the voice of God becomes clearer to us 
and we become more easily able to discern when God is speaking to us and when the thief is speaking to us. It is a gift that God gives us. And if we listen to that voice well enough, if we worship and pray and read the scriptures well enough, we even know that no matter what thieves may seek to hurt us and destroy us, even death itself, that God has promised us that death will have no final victory for any of us because we have been given the gift of eternal life. Let us pray. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us say together the words of our faith as they are written in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. The Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you.
The Lord be with you. And and also with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give him thanks and praise. praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every, every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, 
reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve, in, preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of your eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Patrick, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we have those who trespass against us, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Before us keep the peace. Peace. Alleluia. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son and your Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks to the Thanks God. Be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.